and it is the beginning of our first day here in Coral Island. WASD moves. At first I thought you'd be able to mouse click to move, but that does not appear to be the case. So it looks like we have a, a tool kit that's very similar to Stardew Valley, basically identical. If I right click there, it says I can farm. What does that mean? Okay, that means I go outside. All right. So I'm on the farm. What are we going to do? We want to plant 10 seeds and water 10 seeds. So we're going to go out here with our hoe and we're going to just do a real quick planting. We're not. Okay. We can also select our tools with one, two, three, four, etc. Which is awesome because I have a MMO mouse, so I can actually just use my mouse buttons uh, for uh, toggling tools. That's actually nice, I would say. So. How do I pick up the, the, the wood? Oh, okay. It's the axe. I wouldn't think I would need an axe to pick up a already seemingly cut piece of log, but okay, I understand. So that's going to be our plot. It's nice how the trees go transparent if you're behind them. Let's just go ahead and chop this tree down. If I hold my mouse button down, I will continuously chop. The tree falling animation is very similar to Animal Crossing. So we've done a little bit of cleaning up. I'll say my first experience with the UI here is is very nice. It, it feels smooth. It feels responsive. It feels clean. It is nice. We have six turnip seeds. Let's plant them. So there's no way to plant more than one at a time. You do have to click each individual square there. We have some turnip seeds. Do we? Oh, we can't use them there. Why not? Oh, it's, it is spring, so why can I not use this turnip seed? Do I have more spaces or is that all I can hold? Candied tree seed. A craftable snack to satisfy thrifty foragers. Okay, so I can't plant those. That's like candy to eat. So I don't know... I don't know why I can't plant those turnip seeds. Okay. Well, let's water what we've already planted. Kind of fun. Okay. Well, we'll, uh, we'll go over here and we'll dig a little more. Maybe they can't be in the same vicinity as the other seeds we planted. I don't know. Okay, so we can plant them here. I don't know why I couldn't plant them over here. I, I don't understand. Okay. Remember what tool to use for the job. Okay. I am really enjoying the fact that I can use the one through zero buttons on my mouse to um, to select the different items in my tool belt. It's really convenient. So I've watered 
my first crops. Looks like we have some mail over here. Let's check it out. Right click to open. To repair your house, we'll need you to gather some materials. Please collect 50 wood, 20 stone. After you collect everything, head to the carpenter store and create an order at the counter. Your house will be repaired on the same day. Your local carpenters. Well, <laughs> I wonder if that's the carpenters union, like your local carpenters 776 or, or something. <laughs> okay, so we need to gather some wood and stone. Okay, I keep forgetting what tools to use. There we go. The sense of gathering is is pretty satisfying. I kind of wish that I could move my character with the right mouse button because that just feels natural. Like that would be what I would expect to do. I'm fine with the WASD key movement. Totally fine. I'm just saying. Another thing that kind of comes to mind here is that if I have the right tools equipped, it's a little clunky that I have to toggle between them. Like it just, I feel like coming from Albion Online and the way gathering works in that game, if you have the gathering tools in your inventory, you don't need to select them to do the job. You just go click the target that you want to work with and your character will automatically use them. So I think that's a little bit, maybe that's a quality of life thing that would be cool if it was, if it was that way. Like it should be self-evident that I would use the appropriate tool for the job I'm doing. But then I guess, I guess manually selecting a tool does create a, a little bit more of a sense of hands-on interactivity. Okay, so what I want to do to just clear is use a scythe, not a hoe. What is that? Are those seeds? Another thing that seems to be kind of missing is a zoom in, zoom out feature. Like, I find myself using the mouse scroll wheel just because it feels like I should be able to zoom in a little closer or zoom out a little further. Maybe not a huge amount, but some. And again, I'm, I'm really using Albion Online as, a, as an example, because that's the game I play the most. Okay, what do we got? Screen is going, going gray because I'm tired. So is that where I eat this um, tree seed candy? Consume, okay. So I click that and I click myself. Yeah. Okay, so those candies helped me out. Um, I need to gather more stone. Now, before I go any further, I think I will I will take a look at the controls and just see if there are any controls that uh, that we can change. Like navigate up or down. I could, even if I rebound those to a mouse key, it just wouldn't work because you already interact primarily with the right mouse button. There doesn't seem to be any control scheme that just lets you click a specific spot and then your character will run toward that location. Nor is there, nor is there any option for automatically selecting the tool you need, the job. So that's just how it is. I don't feel like that's in any way game breaking at all. It's just something I would say Albion Online is better at. And this is of course a totally different style of game. 
Oh look, we got an Earth Geode. That's cool. So we might have a treasure inside. That's pretty cool. My energy is pretty low. Is that stamina? Is that what you call that? I don't know. There's a heart and there's a lightning bolt. So I don't know. I don't know right now what the difference is. I have 400 of that. But I'm almost out of energy. So what is it? It is almost 6 o'clock in the evening. So maybe instead of eating more candy, we're just going to go back inside. Well, no. Who cares about the candy? We'll eat it now. And then we're going to finish getting the stone. We just need four more stone. And and then we can... Then we can finish that quest. So as I play this game, my question is really going to be from a experience perspective. How does it feel related in relation to Albion Online? Because I really love the the gathering, the crafting mechanics of Albion Online, even though Albion is a, a much broader game that's an MMO focused on combat, totally different. I also think that maybe a game like this could combine the best of something like Stardew Valley and Animal Crossing. And in a way, maybe it could be the best of what Albion Online isn't in terms of just that cozy, developing your farm, having your sense of property, growing stuff. Uh, my objection to these games is that you wind up having a lot of cool things you can do, but since there's not really any active player-driven economy or marketplace, it feels a little bit empty. And that'll be a question that I explore as I play. Is this going to be a fun game to continue to play for a long time? Or is it going to be more of a game where you play for a little while and then you start to feel like it's got a lot of nice things going for it, but it just doesn't have that long-term stickiness to make you want to make it maybe a primary game? Initially, I think it's pretty cool. I'll, I will say that the... Going home, going to bed creates a save game. So if you want to save your game, you just have to end your day and go to bed. That's also identical to the way Stardew Valley is. So uh, at face value, this seems like just a Stardew Valley with better graphics. Up to this point, it doesn't feel like there's any tangible difference between this game and Stardew Valley, other than Stardew is a very simplistic graphics game, and this one is pretty um, polished. So, we're going to go ahead and call it a day for this particular video, and uh, I will see what comes next.